So, you guys can see me in there, right? Yeah. So I'm orange, red, and yellow. That means I'm the warmest thing inside the screen. Everything around me should be somewhat blue or black, right? Yeah. Including even maybe some things on me. My shirt maybe might be cooler. Um, but really what we're looking for here are the blue and black spots to move on their own because this is set up to the black, black, cold, white, hot. So yellow is going to be the next closest thing to white. So it's like a white, yellow, orange, red, and then it changes to shades of blue. Okay. So again, really what we're looking for here are black and blue things to start moving on their own or where they should not be. So for example, on my face, if there's a big blue blob right here, obviously we know that's my skin. That's 90 plus degrees. So it should not have any kind of blue anything. It will fluctuate based on what's inside the screen. So if we take me out, that red, orange, and yellow is going to fluctuate somewhere else because it needs a base temperature. So, right. so, so really what you're trying to do is trying to keep somebody in view most of the time it's a little difficult to do with three people so really when you're when you're filming you're going to try to keep me or stacy and chad in the picture i got that right correct then? Yep. awesome look at me go all right so it's already recording do you see the red square on there i do that means it's recording that is a normal cell phone so if you squeeze it in any way shape or form it will shut it off or change volume or whatever okay. um, but you may even shut it off by accident um watch we got another couple trying to pass by oh sorry uh-huh. Are you good? Hi, guys. Careful, don't fall in the water. <laughs> um, but if the red square turns to a circle because you tapped it by accident or something goes awry, just let me know. It, that just means I have to splice some video together for you. Okay. Um, so not a big deal. Uh, we did not cover COVID crap, so let me cover that real quick until we, before we get to your next device. Um, masks, completely up to you. Um, I would say probably 50% of the time I won't have one on unless I have to get very close to you based on your device but we're going to be kind of hanging out together anyway. Um, in the more popular areas, you'll see me mask up. Again, up to your disclosure. I'm not one of those COVID fearful people. If you are, I understand that things happen. Um, so again, completely up to you. All of your devices that we're using have been disinfected. So that was one thing that I did do when I got down here was I disinfected everything over again, even though I didn't tour it last night, just to make sure. Okay. And I do have extra masks in case you guys want them and hand sanitizer in case you guys are want to play in the mud so that's okay we should be good <laughs> well, i think we got masks so, again i'm not one of those fearful people it's just one of those tourism and livability officers are out they're not giving tickets anymore but they might give like a hey get your mask up kind of thing for me um, not necessarily for you but who knows for the three of us we could just all be friends out here ghost hunting but they're probably gonna look at me with a bag right see that i'm a tour guide all right so sorry i didn't mean to interrupt no so, problem back to the cool stuff you guys are on vacation when we talk about covid right it's a daily Minute, yeah, unfortunately. You know. Yeah, well, my family's from Ohio. So, like, my sister, my mom, like, they're all telling me all the updates up there. And they're like, how are you doing down there? I'm like, it's like nothing's even going on down here. Right, Michigan's, Michigan's bad. Rip, like, Michigan's bad. Like, in our hometown. And it, it, it's, it's just bad. And it's, then it's just, kind of the, one of the reasons why my husband's brought me down here for right now is because I don't have an immune system. Mm -hmm. Barely. So, I well, haven't been able to. Died, but she has a few, multiple things. So she, can't get, she hasn't gotten out for a year. We haven't, haven't let her too yeah. much. And you're, the numbers down here, yeah, hardly anything. Right, which is weird, as transient as we are. And and my wife's disabled, but we've been out every day in the field. Even when I wasn't allowed to tour, I just drove Uber for 40 hours a week. I was making 35 dollars an hour. Why the hell wouldn't I? You know, I got to yeah, eat too. I got an angry ex-wife that needs paid. So we won't get into that mess. <laughs> All right, so your secondary device, this okay. is going to be another spirit box, but it's literally going to give us a word from time to time in the center of the screen where those three dots are. Then it's going to save them to a list. So you guys are going to get the full list back. Like the, there were 76 terms, which is actually a little bit high for a 90 minute to two hour tour. We're going to clear them out because they already have theirs. And we're going to start you guys off fresh. So it's upside down. Why is it not agreeing with me today? There we go. We got the word every. Oh, excuse me. Um, so here's what I'm going to tell you about the list. 80% of this is BS. It's meant to be a game. So it's, it's even worse than the 50-50 that you have there cool thing is is when you guys get the full list back and I see something that's relevant to the place of where we are or a person I'm talking about or something even going on with one of us I would definitely highlight it in bold like I'll bold it and then I'll give you the explanation why more than likely with the link of where I got my information so for example 50 yards for example is obviously a very specific term so if it says 50 it says Anthony so if there's an Anthony on the team and I get his jersey number you're gonna see I'm gonna get excited Right. Um, so that's where I get really stoked. I don't normally go off of, okay, there might be an Anthony on the team. I want a jersey number, I want a last name, I want a what, I know what a, his state where he came from, something. 
that proves like he played with Big John, um, which I'm going to give you that story here in just a second. But from time to time, I'll ask you, hey, where's our list? You just hit the little calendar on the side because, I mean, you're going to want to interrupt me every time you get a new word. But <laughs> like, yeah. yeah, exactly. I did something else. <laughs> um, so last but not least, I'll show you the device that I'm going to be playing with. This is something new we just added. I shouldn't say we, me. This is a millimeter. So it does three different functions. So it's kind of a collect all, and we're still learning about it between my wife and I and my daughter who gets involved. Um, but the first thing it does is it measures ambient temperature. So right now it's telling me that it's about 74.3 degrees out here based on the yellow probe that's up right here. But it was also very close to my body, so I should expect to see it drop a little bit, uh, probably by about two to three degrees. The top is an EMF meter. So it's one of those little light things you see on TV. And Zach Bagans puts it on a table and says, get close to the electromagnetic field meter. Because yeah. he doesn't know how to talk to ghosts and they don't know what an EMF meter is. Um, <laughs> yeah, exactly. So anything above 0.4, I'm going to get a little excited about. If it starts skyrocketing towards the hundreds, I'm going to be super Paper. stoked. It's probably because of the vape in my pocket. <laughs> 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 Again, 80%. So, last but not least, it has a, a REM pod built into it. So the antenna that you see me pull out, there's actually a separate EMF field being generated around the antenna. So if something breaks it, it's going to go off. So it has to be pretty still. There's no, like if I shake it around and all this mess, it should go off a little bit. But I will literally use this as a communication device as well and saying, hey, if somebody's actually here, make it go to purple. So they're going to go a little bit closer until they get to purple. So again, it's, it's, it's gonna give us different noises and different lights. Is it annoying on your audio? Absolutely. Do I use it all the time? No. Certain areas, I'm gonna see what it's gonna do. Right. So you'll see me kind of play with it from time to time. Um, the red. Nice. That kind of maybe goes along with the story I'm about to tell you. Okay. <laughs> so it's a stretch. I, I look for very big specifics. So no offense, you're gonna get one device. That's probably the most expensive piece I have in the bag. So I, I'm gonna make sure the focus is there and not trying to fumble 12 things. Right. So <laughs> I have to say that your stuff Ghost. isn't pricey too. Come on. No, I was just playing with you. <laughs> the next one's gonna be Casper. Right? Which is funny, because I almost wore my Casper shirt today. Like I have all kinds of weird ghost shirts on top of my stories and shirts. But anyway. And this is interactive. So if I start talking too much too fast, you guys gotta shut me up. So you guys gotta jump <laughs> in involved too. So this place that we're standing at, we start here for a reason, of course it's haunted. Uh, it used to be called Big John's, like I mentioned before. Uh, Big John was a football player for the 1947 New York Giants. So he used to sit in the back of the bar and he would tell the bartender if the, if the cadets that were coming over from the Citadel, which is about a mile up that way, maybe a mile and a half, if they were of age to drink or not, because he didn't want them in his bar if they weren't old enough. So one night two guys come in, they're not old enough, John says, get them out of here. See, you guys are making me talk too much already. So, they leave, pretty mad. They come back the next night, they try to steal the cash register from this front of the bar. John sees what's going on, they get into a little rough and tumble, a little bar fight, and a couple of shots go off. John gets hit in the neck with the bullet, and the bullet ricochets and goes into the wall. So John gets up, goes back to the bar, he tells the bartender, get me another beer, and go get them an ambulance. Now, first off, nobody died in that story, and John was the one that got shot. Until a musical? Does it say musical? It said until, and then it switched to musical. Interesting. Hmm. Really fast. Yeah, and it'll do quick things like that too. Okay. So, um, again, I've been using that for probably five or six years now, so I kind of know when I see something like I don't normally see, like musical is weird. Like I don't normally see that term very often. And that, that thing actually has a vocabulary of 9,000 terms, so Again, when something comes up, and I'm like, yes, I've never seen that before. That's really cool. Um, but anyway, so what do you guys think is haunting this place since nobody died in the story that I told you? And John was the one that got shot. Well, they might all be dead at this point, even if they didn't die that yeah, night. I don't know. They now. I'll, I'll tell you that. <laughs> it's the bullet hole. It's allegedly still here. So they are renovating the place, turning into a, yet another bar since they closed down Big John's in 2015. Um, but people that sit in the front of the bar tend to get a little queasy, a little headache, nauseous, you know, just minor symptoms. I bring the story up on purpose because I don't know how paranormal activity is going to affect you. If you guys start to feel any of those things, even the slightest headache, I kind of need to know. Like, it's a big deal. 
I'm not going to say people haven't passed out from too much activity on my tours, but I don't want any more passing out to happen on my tours. <laughs> so, right. <laughs> um, so let's talk about something a little happier. Let's talk about earthquakes. Those are happy, right? So the mantle that's above your head, we had a big earthquake here in 1886. Your carriage ride person should have told you that. Did you, you said that carriage ride was like five years ago, right? Right. Well, we did it today too. Oh, okay. Okay. The, the, Five years ago, that guy just did, he did like the scripted one where he talked about all that stuff. Yeah. The guy today just freelance. I mean, he told me he was really actually better because he was telling real stories about just, hey, this person was in this show. This person's a bitch. <laughs> My bar fight. Those be, sorry. So, Those seats too. So it could also be talking about football. Ooh. Yeah. That's why you got me. Think outside the box. So we did hear about the earthquake stuff but it was the five year goals one tonight okay. today, today and, just... and even like your guy that like you had today that seemed like he was non-scripted he was scripted so like they all are like even the stories i'm telling you tonight it, even though it sounds like a conversation it's still like i have them memorized right you know what i mean you tell them night after night after night right there's no way you can get away from the memorization of it right but anyway back to my story the earthquake that we had in 1886 this is allegedly where the first death occurred so a piece of the mantle that's above your head also wraps around the front of the building a piece of that from the front broke off struck somebody in the head and allegedly killed them and i say all this allegedly because i don't have any proof one of the gimmicks i have with my particular tour is, is honesty nearby <laughs> nearby nearby thereby that's an old term you don't hear wicked that's a term we always hear. <laughs> but um, I will never make that stuff up for you guys. If something's a stretch or it's, you know, something's going off because of something else, you know, a man made object, I will always clue you in on what's happening like that. So, you guys ready to go ghost hunting? You guys tired of hammer talk yet? <laughs> we're good with We're good. We're, we're good. All right. Let's get out of the puddle. Are you with? Glad nobody fell in. That was a bonus. Well, you almost walked into that. I did not. You guys said you were married, right? Yeah. Okay. Just want to know what my dynamic is. I don't like to assume anything. When, you know what the funniest thing is? Because I get a lot of aunts and uncles to take their nieces and nephews on vacation. Right. And I'm like, so you got to hang out with dad. And he's like, he's my uncle. <laughs> wow, that's weird. Out. All right, so again, here's one of your first locations where it, it was a once were. This is perfect weather, by the way. Like, fantastic. I am super comfortable with this. Um, so this is what I call the big red barn lot. Not to mention it's Sunday night. We probably have the whole city to ourselves. We'll be, I don't want to say unfortunate to see another tour, but we probably won't see another tour tonight. It'll probably just be us. Um, the big red barn is where we keep the horses for the carriage rides. So the horses are still inside, uh, so we don't want to spook them with the red spirit box that you have by keeping it too loud. So this is one of those areas where I'll say, let's just kind of keep it audible to us, just so you can get used to listening to it. The only history I have of this place is that this is the same barn that held horses that delivered milk to Charleston. Whenever I'm telling you stories about like any of the locations, starting with Big John, I'll emphasize keywords. 1947 New York Giants. You guys heard me say that a different way. Over here, it's always they delivered milk to Charleston. So every time we go to a new location, it's always clues. This isn't a long history. This is just a practice area. So this is your novice level. Okay. okay. So spirit boxes, this isn't TV where is somebody here, you know, because first off, if they say no, that means somebody's here. <laughs> so, to go with that mentality um, but if you heard a real estate commercial come through and it said the word houses you think you heard yes just because that's the way our brains work yes, yes and no questions are, are too easily mistaken for something else so we're just gonna stay away from those all night long okay um, so we're gonna start off with something simple we can all agree that the barn is red correct nobody here's colorblind I'm not offending so, I, I've done it so it's the reason why I asked um, that guy gave me a hard time all night. He was joking and doing it, but he gave me a hard time. He's like, I think it's blue. I'm like, dude, you're killing me. But anyway, so we're going to ask simple questions like, if somebody's here, tell me what color the barn is. You know, and then we're going to wait for the color red. We don't hear the color red. It could also be something that is specifically red. Blood, heart, fire truck. These are all things that are specifically red when I put that picture in your brain. So, Sodium. 
I've had that here before. So the question is, because I had to dive into this, they also, the horses that were here, used to deliver eggs as well. So my question was, did they also deliver salt? Because I've had protein, calcium, and sodium show up here multiple times. So it's a good possibility. I don't recall, I don't think I found anything that said that they delivered salt, but I'm not gonna rule it out either. So again, it's a stretch, but it's, it's common at this point because now this is the second time I've, at least the second time I've seen it. That's cool. I can remember. Contemporary. It would be contemporary now. Um, but again, <laughs> pretty vague. So in the event we don't hear any of those things after a couple of tries, we're gonna try something new like what's inside the barn. This is where we gotta start putting those clues together. First off, we already know there's horses in there, but horses are animals. Their breed is draft horses. They delivered milk and, and protein and, and uh, San eggs. San Diego. San Diego? San Diego. Oh. It wasn't a horse's name. Or it could have also been a stable boy. Yeah. But I can't prove that, unfortunately. <laughs> um, so with that being said, this is where we kind of have to put those clues together. Anything relating to a horse is obviously going to be relevant. Anything relating to a double digit number, I'm going to look at it as a jersey number and see if there's an actual tie there. Because um, if you get, for example, the number 44, and then that says Art. Art Faircloth was number 44 on Big John's team in 1927. I know that because it's come up before. Um, so I've had to dive into it. I'm not a football guy, in case you guys can't tell. I'm a very, very big book nerd. So, um, but yeah, this is where we're really gonna start diving into the spear boxes and, and learning the different types, because you can use them together. Thermal imaging. We already talked about keeping a person in view. At our next location, I'm going to show you a little bit of evidence so you have a little bit better gist of what you're looking for. In this particular lot, we have brick, wood, asphalt, metal, uh, foliage. I just want you to kind of get the gist of how those temperatures fluctuate so you know what you're going to be looking at you know, okay. for the next 90 minutes or so. Um, but at that next location, I'll definitely show you solidified evidence. Um, I would definitely call it like a class A. This was an apparition that showed up on the thermal imaging camera. So that way you kind of have a gist of what it is. Okay. Um, so let's get that red spirit box turned up. Let's kind of take a little tour of the lot real quick. Again, this is a five minute novice area, just so you guys get used to listening to it. So volume at the top, little wheel. Little wheel. Yep. All right. There you go. Like an old style radio dial. Yep. But not too loud. Thank you. You can probably go a little higher. They got some fans going on in there for them. Um, I am going to turn on the, the, the REM pod just because I do get, oh look at that, I went to 2.8 and then back down to zero. Reporter. Probably look like reporters. <laughs> I also, with certain areas, especially like our next location, is going to be mid-colonial folks that we're going to be trying to talk to. These are just black boxes with different colored lights. So mm -hmm. black box with the red light, um, black box with blue light, you know, so forth and so on. This is a black box with a metal stick. Like, I don't use specific terms. Um, so, what do you want to know that's here? You're the one asking questions. This is your interactive experience, not mine. I've done this. Um, I, I don't know. <laughs> you go. You, you what do you want to know? know? It doesn't matter. You don't have to talk it's, into the box or anything like that. It's just, I don't know. Right, How many you. horses are in that barn? Can't prove that. And that's true. <laughs> but if but if they got a number, that'd be pretty yeah, crazy. That'd be pretty crazy. don't have any EMF reading here at all. So I am going to move just until I see something. Your, your red and blue. Portrait. Portrait? I don't know what to That's a good question with the ants. I don't know, because you just got to be able to prove it. Portrait wishing. What? No, it says wishing. Portrait wishing? Triumph. Portrait wishing triumph. Okay. I only had one little spike over there that was about it. I wonder if one of the horses was um, a racehorse or something. <laughs> no, my boys are not racehorses. 
but of course this is we're talking to we're trying to talk to people that were I mean, a here a long time, time ago. ago with right. you know maybe it's somebody talking about the horse yeah, we're also talking think about the time period that horses did deliver milk the 1860s to 1920s so I mean, I mean it's not ancient history for us you know, but it is well over 140 years ago not that there weren't racehorses here, because there were, actually, nearby. Um, there was a plot of land, probably about half a mile going that way towards Calhoun Street, and it was owned by one person from the coast all the way to about mid-peninsula, and he used to use it for racing, and parties, and, and it was basically, they called it, you know, the sports entertainment. You know, it was almost like a triathlon type, type thing. See, maybe, maybe one of those spirits was scared. Could be. Just heard some Aerosmith. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna go closer to the barn. Got that in zero. Anyone talking to you? Nobody's talking to you. Any, any new words? Huh? You get any new words? No, but still stuck on trying. heard anything out of the radio. Again, that's not the easiest job. That's why I've been handing when I have the smaller groups. You get two spare boxes. It's much easier to read than it is to listen. So, again, that's why we record it. I'm getting a little bit of a spike here. Of course, now it wants to go away. Paper again. Normally, when something shows up twice, it has some kind of relevance. And our full moon isn't until tomorrow, night, by the way. You're at 98% today. Oh. It just went up to like 7 from 0. And back down again. Come on. Let's try the ring. Somebody here, just get close to that stick. Just get close to it. There's something there. Mentor. Basic gist. Uh, 
turn up, so given like I would have seen something come out of that already. Come on. Let's go learn some real history. What do you think? Let's do it. Let's go this way. Well, yeah, just coming down here to park, it was just amazing the difference from, you know, a night or two ago. Yeah. You good, wife? Yeah. By the way, if either one of you are picture takers and you need me to hold something, I will point out certain things throughout the night that are a little bit more touristy. Mm -hmm. um, that moonshot is very touristy. So if you guys <laughs> it want is it, really pretty. It is. Um, that's great social media stuff, but I have enough pictures of the moon for social media. Yeah. So, um, yeah, let's go ahead and cut your spirit box down. Sorry, that's a southern term. If you guys cut onto that, like, cut on, caught on to cut it off instead of turn it off. I haven't really <laughs> noticed it, no. Yeah, like, when I first moved here from Ohio, and everyone said, I cut the engine, or cut the light. Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> like just some of the slime. I mean, I've been down here almost a decade now. You just pick up on certain things. But anyway, so welcome to another beautiful site. I love parking lots. They're my best friend. So, oh, nope, somebody's gonna be coming towards their car. So this place used to be the home of Charles and Eliza Pinkney. So who the hell were they? They had a son named Charles. They had a nephew named Charles. The nephew and the son were the signers of our constitution for South Carolina. Pretty big deal for us, but who the hell wants to talk about politics on vacation? Not me. <laughs> Am I not on vacation? Not yet. So, this place is very odd. If I were to have a grand finale, this would be it. And I know it's the weirdest place because it's definitely the most empty. So, Eliza was way cooler, so we're going to talk about her. She actually got married to Charles at a young age. By the way, I'm not going to be telling you what color is George Washington's white horse kind of questions. You're going to get answers from your spirit box. We may even separate just so you're a little bit more comfortable with asking those type of questions. Um, and it's obviously a very small lot so we can see each other. I'm not going to run off and say, okay, have a good night. And I'm like, no, you got $500 worth of gear. <laughs> but anyway, um, but this is, uh, you're going to get those answers from Eliza herself, hopefully, fingers crossed. So Eliza married Charles at a young age. You can ask how old she was, but let's finish the story first. Um, because her father thought he was dying. Let's move out of that car's way. This is the only way in and out. We don't want to make any ghosts. So we don't create really ghosts and scares anything. People get really, really mad about that, just so you know. If I shoot him? What's that? If I shoot him for ghosts? Yeah. They're probably thinking you're videoing him. Right, exactly. Well, Sorry. everyone's video when you're out in the when you're out in public. Uh, I wouldn't do that either. Um, so, where was I? So, dad thought he was dying. He went to all his kids' home. And she didn't want to go. So she got married to Charles, saying, I'm staying here. Now, we're talking mid-colonial times, like 1740s. So, didn't give her citizenship because there was no such thing yet. So, it just said, Dad, screw you. I'm not coming home. So, Dad got better. Eliza was right. And he starts sending over wedding gifts. One of those gifts happened to be the plant Indigo. So the layout of the land that you're sitting on was the mansion was in the front. Eliza's garden started at that left tree over there and came all the way across to where we're standing now. And then the slave and servant quarters were in the back. So again, she started experimenting with the plant indigo. She experimented with a lot of things, but indigo is probably the most prominent because it was already here from our Gullah culture. Those are the slaves that came over straight from Africa. Um, so she had to learn from them how to keep it cultivated in our weird temperatures. It was cold out here two nights ago. I had a jacket and hot hands on. So that just tells you how stupid our, our weather is. So they taught her, she did well. She moved it over to Snee Farm in Mount Pleasant, called dad up and said, I need some contacts. I got this really expensive indigo plant that I need to start selling. Boom, 
we have a businesswoman in recolonial times. Now, indigo is a plant that makes blue that it makes her blue jeans blue. We do have it on right now. It's exactly how we use it today. Um, the cool thing is, is it started at its height right here, even though it was already present with the, the slave culture. Produce. Produce. Either way you want to look at it. Um, so Eliza did a ton of things for our country, but let's, let's talk about some of the weird stuff and weird facts about her. So first off, she was the second wife named Eliza from Charles, back to back. So, nice. Uh, how do you screw that one up? She ended up marrying a third Eliza? No, she was the second. Okay. And I, that, I read something else about... No, okay, I'm just getting confused. Yes, yeah, just damn. Yeah, there was... Nice. There's only yeah. so many Elizas. Yeah, I know, right? There's <laughs> a lot of Elizas during this time period. Um, so they both go by their maiden name. So it's Eliza blank Pinkney. So that way they can each be, you know, Right. have their identity. They both start with the letter L. That's the only thing I'm going to tell you. Hopefully you can find out what her maiden name was. Um, because both maiden names have shown up here several times. Huh. Yeah, really cool stuff. Um, Alter. What's it say? Alter. At the altar? Stretchy. I'm, I'm waiting for specifics. We, we, you know, we're sitting here talking about our marriage, yeah. which I was about to go into. You know, you can obviously ask when she got married, but you can also ask when she got widowed. So that's a good number too, because it's not something, it, it's very specific, right? Um, you can ask anything you want to about her death. So how old was she? I know I'm giving you a lot of numbers, but these are specific details. What did she die from? How old was she? Um, sorry, it's probably me. People probably, hey, do you have room on your tour? I get it all the time, right in the middle of a tour. I'm like, nope, <laughs> sorry, have a good night. Um, where did she die? What did she die from? And which U.S. president was a pallbearer at her funeral? A lot of people go straight to that question so they can get that one done and out of the way. If they have a definitive answer there, that's concrete evidence for somebody that's a non-believer. Um, but yeah, that's pretty cool stuff that a president carried her to her grave. That doesn't tell you how important she was. I don't know what's going to. Wow. You can ask what happened to the mansion. It's obviously not here anymore. Um, if you're going to poke around with the kids, try to stick to very basic stuff. How many boys, how many girls, how many total. Don't go into specifics about the kids. There was a tragedy there. All activity will stop. I've seen it dozens of times. You start poking around, she doesn't want to talk about it. So depending, and it also depends on which number she gives us and how many kids she had. Because sometimes it's one number versus another one. Because sometimes she just says, I had this many because I don't want to talk about the other one. It's kind of tragic. Um, I did notice that the light is blinking tonight. So this EMF meter and that light, if you videotape it from the angle that I'm holding it here, you can actually see within two frames, there's like a pulse here and then a pulse there. So I don't like using the word energy. I think that's too generic. But whatever's influencing all of our devices in here is also influencing that weak light. Notice the, the light to the left of that isn't doing anything. So it's the, the light on the right. And right. I have tested this, I don't know how many times, just to make sure like it's a legitimate thing. And it doesn't always blink. It's just kind of my, sometimes it's just on and this thing's still doing this. Oh, she's telling me I'm a liar. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Eliza. But <laughs> at any rate, well, sometimes this is still doing this guy and that's just on or it's just off. I never know what I'm gonna get walking in here But if I have a light now look it's gonna go slow down. It was blinking pretty good earlier It's usually my barometer. I got excited when we get when we turned the corner going Yes, we're gonna finally get some good stuff because it's been about a week out of here where I haven't really seen a blink so I Would say go explore. I will stay out of your way so that way you guys can get comfortable with asking your spirit box questions You're not disturbing anybody here um, and I normally give that warning about the camera anyway, so don't think I was scolding you, please. Um, <laughs> he's like, just don't yell at me again. Man. Don't get us killed. You're a jerk. <laughs> um, I usually, people just get weird, and I've had people literally, because they park here every night, and they think we're filming. Now, granted, if I was a car thief, that would be my first tool, because then I know how long the cars have been here. Right. So, again, oh, yeah. they, they do kind of have some, some argument, but right. they don't know what we're actually doing until they hear the <sighs> out of your spirit box, and I'm like, oh, shit, they're ghost hunting. You know, and then I'm out here with my blinky blinky lights, and they're oh, there's the other guy over there. Um, but yeah, so, <laughs> told you, I'm not your typical guy. <laughs> so have some fun in here. We are gonna spend about 10 minutes because I wanna see what you're gonna get out of that spirit box. Get used to listening of what's coming through. Um, ask questions together. I gave you some good examples. I'm not giving you the answers until before we leave, and hopefully she's gonna give you some of them anyway. Some of them might be clues. So again- So the house would have been up in this area? The house here? would have been up in front. Um, garden right here. Servant and slave quarters back here. The problem with back there is I can't prove any of it because there's no records. Okay. So kind of take that for what it's worth. A lot of, you know, my um, 
you know, African Americans that come on here, and even you know some of the Mexicans I get on my my group, they they want to go straight back there. And I'm like, I can't prove anything. You can ask what you want to. And then it's it went to drink. What was the first one? Tie. Tie like a necktie. Mm -hmm. So lie tie drink. I think somebody's drunk. Hey. Might be trying to say my tie hey. drink. Is it you? <laughs> Is it you, honey? Are you the one that's drunk? Oh, Hi. Go have some fun. I'm going to be testing this, these EMF fields over here. And Just be careful on this. Here. Yeah. Okay. I can actually see. Okay. So I'm good. Don't follow are me. Are you wearing like the um, the puppy kids? Like, are there dogs on your shoes? There's cats on hers. Cats. But yeah. <laughs> my wife has the dog version of that. She loves They're them. really comfortable. So I told you my wife was disabled. She has CMT. So she basically has braces to walk. Um, so it's very hard for her to find shoes that will actually go around the braces because she has drop foot. So she has that brace to keep her foot in place. But she doesn't wear them very often, but she had to have them when we, spot, when we were walking through Petco. We yeah. have two dachshunds. So they're, they're our entire world because my kids are grown. So yeah, yeah our kids are all gone. I'm we have, we, we have two little to let me get a baby. We have two grandkids that actually. Do you? No, we were actually at a store the other day and this, this was a little girl like this. All of a sudden, just like that and the, i'm like what to her and, I, and the lady's like she's looking at your shoes yep. <laughs> like okay yeah, she got totally cartoons on your feet oh my God, fish. <laughs> all right let's all find right. some yeah. you go with I'm, you go this way i go this way oh, you're gonna help me i'm going i'm helping you yeah. stick together yeah. okay you're gonna help me ask you questions anyway. oh that's true let's go to where her house goes then I'm going to stay a little back so I can get farther around you. Hi, Miss Liza. I'm Stacy, and this is Corey, my husband. Hello. So we just have a, a few questions for you. If you'll talk to us. We'd like to know... We know that you got married, but we would like to know what was your maiden name before you were married? What's that? Did you just try saying something? No? I thought through the spirit box. Are you trying to talk through the spirit box, Eliza? No. Eliza, how old were you when you got married? Anything in your spirit box, you know? I, I, it saw kind of saw like twice that there was something. Right, I thought it came through something. What president was um, at your funeral? Ask that again. Ask it again. What president was at your funeral? Something, something. You're trying to talk, aren't you, Eliza? Through the spirit box. I think she is. How old were you, Eliza, when you when you passed away? Getting any words? Eliza, where's your your house at now? Influential. She was rich. You were influential. Um, what did she die die of? What did you die of, Eliza? How many children did you have? Don't go farther than that. Improved. You Please. Eliza, you had a magnificent house. What happened to it? It's not your house isn't here anymore. What happened to it? Did something happen to your house? Is there a ghost walking behind me?
All right, so what was your favorite flower? Nothing. So we just forgotten a question. Bathroom. Which bathroom? <laughs> Am I standing in your bathroom? Did your dad, your dad sent you a plant when you got married, one of your gifts, and it turned into quite an industry for you and made you very wealthy businesswoman. But what was it that he sent you? What's it, when, what is it used for? Okay. Why is I garden now? Is this one of your favorite things? Could you try to touch someplace on my wife, Stacy? Try to touch her no. if you can. No. no. Where am I standing now, Eliza? There was a couple earlier. I thought we thought in this in this in this jumped a couple times, but yeah, there was hard something to, that it, it sounded like something happened twice. But it's hard to you know tell. Yeah, it. it is hard to tell when you're out in the field unless it's you know in a close space. Um, like I said, it's not the easiest job. You need energy. It said. Did you hear that? You need energy, Eliza. I'm saying battery. Okay, I'll Eliza, how many kids did you have? That's pretty cool. It is. I love it. Eliza, where am I standing now? Oh, that's a good question. Well, I wasn't her. Well, no plumbing. Maybe she had a room where she... Outhouse. Well, what an outhouse or chamber pot or whatever, you know. I will tell you, last week I got the words, no bath. In one phrase. It said, no bath across the screen. So I was like, huh, was there actually plumbing then? Again. What else did you ask? You asked, asked what, uh, what her father sent her after she got married. Okay. What president was at her funeral? Yeah. How many kids did she have? Mm -hmm. We asked her what when she we, passed, when passed we, away from. And I think it was when we when we asked the maiden name is when I thought the spirit that the we it when it came through something on that. I mean, something happened, but we couldn't tell what it was. Definitely, this is a focus point for me on every tour. You know, I always listen to this data while we're here because there's always so much that comes through and I give you a million different types of questions. So not just numbers, but names. Um, what happened to the mansion? Um, we asked that. You know what I mean? It's things like that. So I'm always looking at... Um, what year were you married in, Eliza? How old were you when you became a mother? 
might be treading lightly you guys got there. Good questions. Well, if you really just try, I mean, once you, you're trying to think of things you can actually find out. You know? yeah, proof. A lot of times the, the kids, and I say kids, like people under 25, <laughs> like they start asking, how did you feel about your husband? How was your marriage? Like, I can't prove that the chick was happy or sad. Right. Like, are you kidding? Eliza, did you have an education? Yes or no, but I like the question. Again, 1740s, 1750s, what do you think? We're talking about a female. Right. Yeah. Probably would have, her only education would have been in her own household and she. It was things that she learned on her own. Right, and if she was blessed enough to have people that helped her do things that probably most women weren't allowed to do. Eliza, what do you like to do for fun? <laughs> This is a, this not, Nick, I'm waiting for that to come up. It just turned into Tinder, huh, honey? Maybe she paints or something. I don't know. You're like... Plants. That, that was her fun time. Oh, yeah. yeah. She loved I garden. She had to have gotten into that. So, part of the reason why she was so into botany was because her father, like, her family was here, you know, but they left her behind to run one of the farms. So, this the farm was something that her father She was 15 years old when that started. They have left it to her in the will. Compete. Compete. I don't know if there's any competition. Unless we're talking about your racehorses again. <laughs> Eliza, were you born in uh, America, the, the New World, or were you born in England? Neither. Well, it's interesting we go. if the uh, answer actually comes up because I've never seen that answer come through. You just had something come through. Can I tap the dance? Influential for sure. I told her I said yes, you were. <laughs> yeah, we were over there. We were asking her about her house. We actually that came about when we were asking about her house. Costume again, or was it costume last? It was the last day of the costume just showed up. This thing needs two batteries. Oh my god, does it need two batteries? Good thing the wife works for Best Buy as a day job. Hmm, what else can we ask? It, it's, it's, it is that sometimes tr the trickiest part is to ask things that are, are relevant to her. I mean, you, know, you can't ask things about how she, she lives. Suspend. Suspend. Did you win any other awards? She had to have been won something for her business stuff. Plants, I don't know. <laughs> Five times. I'm also listening to the spirit box as we're all sitting here talking because that's just what my ear does. So, and I've heard a couple little things, but nothing where I'm like, oh, I said this, you know, could be vaguely relevant until I put my earphones on tomorrow morning. I won't know. How many, out of your children, how many little boys did you have? How many little girls did you have? Save that girl. Can you hear that? Yeah. Yeah, that was. Right after you asked the girl, then it said partially, then it said safe. Save that girl. That was a little wild. Mm -hmm. Don't. But he said don't don't ask too much. Positive. Just tell me to stay positive. Did you like your husband? I have to know. <laughs> Even if we can't was prove it. Was he nice? A nice man? What was your dad's, what was your dad's middle name? What month did you die?
Just say he was powerful. Well, that relates to the damn ponies over there. It says carrier. But that said, thought he was powerful. How did you feel about your husband? It's powerful. He was also a politician. What if she's happy? I will tell you, she's written several times that he was the love of her life. Oh, good. That makes me feel better. <laughs> I'm glad that you had a good husband. excitable but not too excitable. Alright, so let's start off with Eliza was 22 when she got married to Charles. He was 45. So there's a 23 year age gap between them. So sometimes I'll get 22, sometimes I get 23 or 45. So it depends on who I'm talking to. I'm saying, hey Eliza, how old are you when you got married? And 45 comes through. Okay Charles, welcome aboard. Good to see you. You know what I mean? Like that's just how we have to go with this. Um, but she had four kids, three boys, one girl. And I did hear the number one shortly after Save That Girl. It came in a phrase, but it was still the number one. But it could also refer to something else, depending on what we get out of it. I'll explain in a sec. Eliza was 70 when she died. Oh, by the way, she was 36 when she became a widow. So not long after. Wow. Yeah. Right. So 14 years. And she probably, I mean, at that right. age, 70 would have been a good long life at that age. Wouldn't yeah. have been at that time period, I would imagine. Yeah. So she died in 1793 from breast cancer that we know of. Again, no such thing as cancer yet. Medical records all point to cancer. Um, but she was in Philadelphia, which is where she died, where she's buried, and that's where George Washington carried her to the grave. So George Washington was your president that you were looking for. Um, so Washington can sometimes be a lot or a mouthful to get out, especially with the two types of sphere boxes we have here. Um, so sometimes we'll get clues to Washington. We'll get the word apple, we'll get the word one first. Um, uh, Wood is a big one too because you have wooden teeth. I get that a lot over here. So again, very simple terms, one to two syllables. But have I had Washington? Yes, I didn't even know that until I got that EVP twice. And then, wow. I think it was about two weeks ago, on the Red Spear box, I heard the phrase Denzel Washington come through. First off, why the hell are we talking about Denzel? He hasn't had a movie out in how long? Right. Second, it's that part of the phrase that I needed, which was Washington. Which president took you to your grave? Denzel Washington. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> So Washington was the president. Um, let's see what else. So again, three boys, one daughter, Charles, Thomas, George, and Harriet. George is the one that passed away as an infant. That's the one she doesn't like to talk about. But she also named that George after her father, George. And his name, ironically enough, was George Lucas. So Eliza's maiden name was Lucas. The insignificant first wife, her maiden name was Lamb, as in the L-A-M-B, animal lamb. So we have Lamb and Lucas. So, and you still have stuff coming through. Master. I'm standing in the slave We're in the slave course right now. Yeah. Um, and I'm talking about her. So, um, but again, she treated her slaves pretty well from what I understand. So it wasn't a, a slave whip and kind of roots kind of stuff that we all think of when we think of slaves. Like, this was a respect. She obviously learned from them. Um, what are the questions? Oh, the mansion burned down in 1861. Remember, Eliza died in 1793. So that would have been almost 70 years after her death. So the house was still within the family and it was just in the middle of a, one of the great fires. Um, when we say great fires here in Charleston, we've had dozens. It's always the great fire of whatever year it happened. So this was 1861. It started at this coast and went to the other peninsula coast. The house just happened to be in the way. Unfortunately, the only pictures we have of the gorgeous Pinckney home was after the fire. So it was kind of cool that you guys went up towards where that Jeep is now because that's where it occurred. I went over to where the stable, like where their, um, not their stable, but almost like their carriage house. Right. Been. So um, I usually go up there because I'll get some kind of activity out of it, but I didn't get anything. But I also get, get really good EVPs out of the corner where the fire happened. Uh, what are the questions that I had you guys at? Did that co about cover everything? Sack. That's interesting. Um, but I'll definitely be listening to the Red Spirit box you know, in the morning. 
so that way I just more guess comfortable I'm, for you. I'm actually just being like cognizant of the buttons. I think that's what's freaking me out. Yeah, don't worry about it. <laughs> You'll be fine. Um, I'll try that. Yeah, so far. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so from here, we're going to walk up to Lodge Alley. Um, that's about four blocks from here. It's not far, but it, it, four blocks sounds like a lot. It's really not. Um, so my EMF meters I'm going to ignore because the parking meters that we have, the electrical lines are underneath the sidewalk. It's enough to make them go off, so I'm not even going to pay attention to them. Like, even when I hand these devices out, I'm like, just ignore it. You don't get excited on East Bay Street for any reason. Um, but when we go to down Lodge Alley, like, I'll mask up once we leave this lot. Um, again, up to you guys if you even have masks. I don't really care. Okay. Um, but Lodge Alley, if you're going to listen, probably not. It's because we're going to be talking and chatting because it's a smaller group. Um, but if you want to listen to it, I'm listening for names. I'm not going to tell you which names or why until we get there. Um, but usually when I'm going, like, listening to the stuff in the morning, I kind of know what the time frame is to listen for those specific names to see if anything popped up. Okay. Um, so... Again, I don't like to put that suggestive thought, like Red Barn and White right. Horse. By the way, you guys passed. I did play a little mind trick on you, and I said I'm not going to give you questions like what color is George Washington's White Horse. Right. And you guys both passed, so good job. <laughs> so most people are like, is the President George Washington? So, but you guys didn't even think of that question, and I do that early on, so that way when I do say the Paul Bearer thing, it, you haven't even registered it yet. Like, it's either already gone, or you've been thinking about presidents since I said it. So, I know. <laughs> Told you, I'm not your typical tour guy. What's the spot here? Why do you step down? This is a one up, three down. See? And then kind of another trip has it right here. So yeah, like I was turning people away for spring break for three weeks and then all of a sudden it's like nothing. Like everybody went away. It was the craziest thing. Felon. Felon? I think we might have been there a couple of times already. <laughs> it's like my, it's another reason why I start where I do. First off, so I can kind of give the heated warning about headaches and whatever. Um, and second, because that's the only public bathroom. And now it's closed. Nobody's coming to school. get a chance to see the night market because it's different from the day market we didn't see the like i don't think it happened last night because we were here five years ago there was a night market and actually she found a doll that she went we were hoping to buy another one and then like last Wait. night last night just wasn't here you know I mean, there wasn't hardly anything here anyway because of the rain and that's kind of what we thought we ate dinner yesterday was my birthday so like oh, and then we, came, we, we came by earlier too and it we came by earlier and then yeah so like there was nobody here the, the Charleston Crab House is like where I just wanted my birthday dinner. That's what I wanted for my birthday dinner. So I built a whole vacation around it. Okay. She puts up with me. But uh, she's like, you can't make a whole vacation around it. And I go, I can. Yeah. So <laughs> I actually can, can do this. So, I mean, the night market is back. It's uh -huh. just that storm last night probably scared it off. Right. Um, and then today, there may have been some flooding. I wasn't down here today, so I don't know. It wasn't bad at all. But we didn't know if it would be... Weekends, or? We didn't know if it would be Sunday night so or not. the day market is... I want to say it's pretty much every day, except for Sunday, so that might be today. It wasn't available today. Again, I don't come down here a whole lot during the daytime, yeah. unless, you know, I got family in town or whatever, they want to go see stuff, um, or if I want to walk the water. Like, I, I've been down here since 7 o'clock, just so I can take a break from Ubering today and chill. But a lot of times I'll go down to, like, Pineapple Park, and I'll just sit, you know, by the water. I mean, I live by the water. I have to take advantage of it. Right. Because I get, like, one beach day a year. Like, that's it. And what's sad is I, t I go on vacation in two weeks. I'm going up north. <laughs> yeah. 
Well, we had been, you know, it had been, we've already had it been 80 at our house and stuff. And then all of a sudden last week, we, we got four inches of snow. Yeah. It was like, I was actually supposed to go, we were supposed to leave out of town Thursday. Hmm? That's a thermal imaging camera. It's a ghost hunting tour. So spirit boxes, thermal imaging, EMF, like I do the whole night. <laughs> well, I, I work, it's just, it's just me, my dad, and my brother. It's a plumbing, we do plumbing, heating, and cooling. So it was like Wednesday was snow. We were supposed to leave what Thursday morning. So when was it Wednesday? No, it was Tuesday. Tuesday at like noon. I look at my dad, I'm like, I'm on vacation, dude. This snow sucks. We're leaving. <laughs> we're leaving. Reddish, Reddish my in laws live in the Pittsburgh area. So that's okay. Where we're Reddish orange, mm -hmm. I sent you the color. That's my vacation. Take the wife to go see her family. Like you know, give her a break. Of course, I always try to squeeze in an investigation whenever I'm in a different state. Right. Makes sense. Well, the last time we went up there, it was literally, we went to Gettysburg for a full day. I did three investigations. I went to Frank Lloyd Wright House. I did an investigation there. And then I dragged him over to the Flight 93 Memorial from 9-11. We've never been to that to that one. I would like to go there. It was it was interesting. It's probably the most I've had activity wise. I, I I'm in a I have a band that we record. And actually, the guy from the studio we go to he does this with a group from Ohio. I'm not usually and into this stuff. So they, I know that they were. I think they just did. I didn't read it, but he just was posting about some place they did last night that was he was pretty excited about. But what? I was holding my breath and past them, and it told me to breathe. I'll take it. I'm not even kidding. I told you stuff I thought my mask us. isn't on, so I just held my breath. <laughs> That's the breathe. That's wow. funny. Wow. Look, there's there's Noah in it, or there's a uh, alley in line. What is it? Is it That's the restaurant. wife is like, I'm planning this whole trip to St. Augustine uh -huh. because I got invited to come and in, investigate the lighthouse down there uh -huh. which is one of the most haunted places I'm sure you've seen it on TV yeah. because every group has done it but there's another podcast that I'm friends with they just interviewed me for their podcast and they're like you got to come down to this investigation we'll send you some, with some tickets all right wife we're going to Florida <laughs> that's, right. that's how you do it <laughs> so, it's called a vacation yep I actually saw um, on Facebook. That's where, you know, they have that really cool, uh, the big fort there, too, in St. Augustine. And we went into this, down inside of this fort, and there was this, these caves, and then it went, and there was a little crawl through place, and like, yeah. the girls went in there, and I started to go in I there. I said, I am not And going she wouldn't go in there, and like, seriously, like, it, no. you felt like it was like, this just had a weird feeling, you know? So then we started, uh, then you research it. That was where basically prisons were just put in there, sealed in to die, then they put someone else in. Yeah. It's like, yeah, that's why that felt weird. Yeah, I've heard, I haven't been to St. Augustine yet. Um, so, like, this is going to be interesting. I told the wife two days of ghost hunting, two days of romanticism. So that's what you get. Like, <laughs> no, this would be fun. To, she's got to enjoy this. She does. Yeah. Um, but you got to remember, when I'm doing my own investigations, I don't have all my gear out. So basically what happens is I take that camera and I put it in my cargo pocket. So it's just the camera part sticking out right now. Um, the spirit box is on mute in my pocket or in my bag. And then I have um, that spirit box running on my phone, like the one with the words on it. And then I have the EMF in my pocket. Like I have, like I go and visit these places just like you guys do. Right. But nobody knows what I'm doing. I just right. do a podcast episode. So <laughs> I just look at all the data later. Right. If you have it, you can just collect right. it. So that way I can enjoy it, take as many pictures as I need to, read all the cards and all the stuff they have around, and then kind of take it from there. That's cool. So that's how I do it around here, too. So unless I'm staying at a haunted hotel, I don't pull out all the gear. I don't need to. Yeah. So, how you doing, bud? Howdy. These shoes are weird on us. Yeah, I go through a lot of tennis shoes here. This, this alley kills my my shoe stuff. I have to rotate them out. Alright, so you can be here for the This is a brief stop only because this is a quiet area. 
You have to imagine when I have 10 people with all the spirit boxes going and stuff. Like, all right, guys, let's, let's head it down. Give me five minutes. So that way you know what I'm looking for tomorrow and what you're going to be looking for when you're going through the data. So this place, when we crossed that last crosswalk, that was the original Charlestown walls. So it went up Cumberland Street. Now point it out again because that's where we're going to end up. But across the street was where they went north and south. So this would have been one of the original streets we had in Charlestown. So before it was Charleston, it was Charlestown after King Charles. Obviously it's only wide enough for horse and buggy. Um, but people used to live here. So there was little shotgun houses here in the 1800s. I have the full list of names of every person that's ever lived here. It's not an extensive list. It's not a census. That's going to have to go away. Sometimes they come out and come um, That's where the security guys go. Um, but this is where I go through and we, I have their occupations as well. So if we get something related to their occupations, like a mariner or a grocer, or any of those things, it kind of matches up, and it usually matches up with the names that come along with it. So, how you doing, guys? How are y'all doing? Good. Cheers, though. Mm -hmm. So again, this is where I'm looking for the security for the hotel. Mm -hmm. So they, they have offices all around the block that they have to go and check. So I just kind of stay out of their way. Um, this, this is Lodge Alley Hotel, Lodge Alley Inn. So it's a timeshare. Of course, this is one of the places I'll probably be staying at next year, so I can test to see if their ghost is real. Um, because there's, every hotel has a ghost, of course, so I'm going to test them all and see what's real and what's not. Um, but they did do an archaeological dig here, and they did find some of their tools and their silverware and some of their clothing, and classified these people as lower class. And that makes sense, A, because of the housing, because they were shotgun houses, but also because of the smell of low tide coming over the wall up this alley. So if have you ever smelled low tide before? It's pretty bad. It smells like dead fish. Right. Oh, okay. we, we, my, yeah, we, we live in my parents' lot of water. So okay, right. so you know what low I mean, tide is. Yeah. So that would have been coming through here all the time. It makes complete sense. Uh, the Masons also used to meet down here. This was a Masonic Lodge, so that's why it's called Lodge Alley. And again, it's one of those weird places where stuff happens all the time. It's not every single night, but when I do get it, it's solid. So if I get something out of the spirit boxes when I'm going through it or the thermal imaging camera, I'll obviously give you where I got all my information from to show you that this is where this happened. So we're going to walk through the rest of this alley and we're going to be cutting through a neighborhood. At that point, we'll be three friends just kind of hanging out because the tour guides aren't allowed to be tour guides in neighborhoods because that's a neighborhood once we exit this alley okay. until we get to our next location. So definitely keep an eye on your word list and obviously keep filming. All right. How's your feet holding up? Some kind of cobblestone. That's right. Now, what would it go? Some of the older roads that are super pretty. Um, are nicer than this. So it makes sense that this would be like this with the, the tight coming in like this. Oh, yeah. It was good advice. It was pretty good advice. It did stay alive earlier. It did stay alive. It's just trying to help you. Look this dumb girl's holding her breath. <laughs> and then you know what said Fallon right before we walked by those two guys? That were sitting here? Yeah. And then when we walked past all that like busier area, it said exam of, of like students right there. Or for you to examine your surroundings. General. General? General. Yeah, there's no generals back there. Sorry. Nope. <laughs> you still haven't run into a tour. Another tour. It's kind of nice to be the only tour guide working. <laughs> Sorry, I have a lot of competitors. Yeah. I mean, I'm a cell phone company. All these other corporate companies, when I don't see them out here, it's a good feeling. Right, no, I gotcha. <laughs> Actually, the town is like pretty good. Yeah, it seems like. It's Sunday night. You're in the Holy City. 
this is a day for family. I'm acid. Acid? No, dude, I don't do acid. <laughs> so take note of this alley because I'm going to tell you guys the story of this place. I'm just not allowed to take you down there. Okay. There's a great ghost story down there. I'll explain why. There's definitely lots of rules here. Well, let's just say I pissed off the new owner of the mansion at the end of the block. Oh. <laughs> and I got an email a week later. Compensation. <laughs> you must want to get paid. You said what you just said, and her back said compensation. <laughs> Conversation or Com compensation? Comp compensation. Oh. Compensation. <laughs> you were talking about it. Yeah, I'd be really uh, hip to if it said confrontation. Like, because he and I kind of had words. Yeah. Because I was in the wrong, but I wasn't going to let my group know that. <laughs> they, they had my back. I was good. Good. <clears throat> so, because there is a house at the end of that alley, it's considered a neighborhood. So, oh. same neighborhood. So this is the, more of your sightseeing type. You guys should have been through here with your carriage ride, I hope. I believe so. <clears throat> so we're going to look at several things. So this whole corner is just covered with haunted stories and actual activity based on whatever stories you tell. So I always kind of watch to see what the word list is giving us, but it hasn't given me a signal of which story to tell tonight. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to stop here. I'm going to point out that's the alley that we just passed that I told you to take note of. Do you guys see the doorway in the center? Yeah. That's actually, a, there's a gate there. It is locked all the time. But that gate, that used to be called Dueler's Alley. So when there was a duel and a death from the duel, they would bring the dead body through the gate, over this courtyard, go over to St. Philip's Cemetery, drop the body, and go celebrate the winner. However, nobody talks about that damn gate but me. Because nobody ever found the research. I don't remember where the hell I found that research. I'm like, that is like the coolest thing ever for a ghost hunting tour. It's creepy. <laughs> so, let's talk about one of the duels that occurred there. So, again, it used to be called Duelers Alley. There was a doctor that moved down here from Rhode Island. So his name was Dr. Joseph Brown Ladd. I say his name specifically because it comes up on our spirit boxes often. Either Brown or Joseph or something, Dr. E. Um, <clears throat> I don't hear Ladd. I don't think I've ever had Ladd, but that would be really cool if I did. But anyway, he moves down here because he's supposed to get married to his fiance, Amanda. Amanda just inherited a bunch of money from her dead parents. The attorney that was handling all that money told Amanda, send the doctor away. I think he's just after your money. So the doctor moves to Charleston. The coachman that brings him into town set him up to be robbed and killed. He's obviously a doctor student. He's dressed pretty well. This guy probably has money. So he sets him up to be robbed and killed. And somebody walking by sees what's going on and stops the whole thing. His name was Ralph Isaacs. He was an attorney here. He already lived here. He's from here. So he says, let me take you somewhere safe. This guy's going to set you up. He takes him to 59 Church Street. We're on Church Street now, just so you know. Obviously, big church behind me. So he takes him up there. He starts renting a room. The two become friends. The doctor's practice starts to take off. Amanda's moving down soon because he's proving he's not just after her money. He's got his own. So everything's going well. He becomes known as the whistling doctor because he whistles all the time. So... <clears throat> Him and Ralph are friends, they go see plays together, but because the doctor makes so much more money, he has different seats, so he can't sit next to his buddy. So they talk about these plays on the way home. Oh look, here comes another giant group. They're gonna go straight up to that church and watch, guarantee it. And I'll tell you that story up there, like, in like 30 seconds. It's cool, but it's not necessary to drag it out for 15 minutes. So anyway, the doctor, where was I? So they have different seats, they start talking about these plays on the way home, and they start arguing about one of the actresses that was in town. So the doctor loved her, Ralph did not. So obviously it turned into an argument. And then Ralph starts insulting the doctor's fiance back home. So with that being said... Grandma? Grandma? That's not cool. There's no grandma in this story. What's well, the compensation? Your whole story is about money. That's true. You're a grandma. Yeah, I am a grandma. Look, they're gonna come up right up through my okay, grave. I am gonna put my mask on. Yeah. Reap. Oh lord. Reap? 
Church nice. is right there. Oh. Oh, that's the symptoms. Okay. Whoa. What did you do? I just set it down. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Mm-hmm. Which I, so, the thing we didn't ask, which I guess you know, I'm not going to be talking about that. Yeah. So, I don't know, so we're going to have two recordings, which is okay. I don't normally splice the audio together. I just know that it stopped in the middle of the doctor's story, so that way I know where to pick it up. So I'm so sorry about that. You're fine. That battery's been a little sensitive. It got a, a little jolt from the next location, and it hasn't really been right since. And when I say jolt, it wasn't because somebody dropped it. I'll explain when we get there. So... Two people go their separate ways, Ralph and the doctor. Look at the size of these groups. You think they can even hear the tour guide? Probably not. I said out loud, I did. Wow, what a jerk. And I'm on recording. <laughs> so, anyway, the doctor is pretty mad. He goes home. Ralph is from here, obviously, and they're loud too. Do you hear that? Holy cow. So, anyway, Ralph calls his newspaper buddies and he puts an ad in the paper and says, I need to put an ad in about what a disgrace the doctor is to the city of Charleston. He's not from here, he's not one of us. Let's let's get him out of here. So he puts the ad in, the doctor sees it, and obviously he's pretty mad. He says, let's go down to Dillard's Alley and settle this. So they come down, they take their 20 paces, they turn, and the doctor points his gun in the air and he shoots. He's willing to forgive his friend. He did not want to hurt him. However, Ralph still has his one shot, and he puts it in the kneecap of the doctor. He doesn't die doesn't come through the death gate. He goes home to 59 Church Street. I know, she's really loud. I can hear your ears piercing right now. Yeah, I'm pretty, pretty abrasive. She's got to because their groups are too big. Yeah, way too big. Um, but anyway. Yeah. Stretchy. I'm waiting for kneecap. I'm waiting for bullet. I'm waiting for whistle. That's Very nice. specific. You can start, you can start some cool stuff. Yeah, you really need cool stuff doctor so he died 10 days later once they took him home oh so he did die he did die you gotta remember it's 1800 right so he probably bled himself out so they say as you walk through that alley you can hear the whistles from the doctor or gunshots now have i gotten things it was normally a place where i said all right all spirit boxes off no noise making we're gonna walk through peacefully so we can catch the audio you guys listen for whistles if you catch something let me know but we have a lot of <laughs> yeah she's very informed mm -hmm. um so but if they would, they would catch stuff and send it back to me. We have a lot of hecklers that like to walk by because all the locals know the Whistling Doctor story. So and you can Google the Whistling Doctor and get a whole lot more detail of what I'm giving you. Mm -hmm. I give you enough of a spirit box because that's what I do. So let's get the story that she's telling up there. I'll be very brief on that. There's a sign right inside that cemetery. It says there's no ghost here but the Holy Ghost. The reason for that, 1888, a young lady named Sue Howard Hardy died six days after her stillborn child. 1987, local photographer takes pictures of all of our cemeteries, he captures a full apparition. A woman wearing a shawl, baby basket next to her, right over that grave. It's 1987, no cell phones, no Photoshop. Right. He sends it to Kodak. Well, you guys are my age, I'm guessing, so you guys know what Kodak is, I'll have to explain it. Right. <laughs> I get kids on this tour and they look at me, what the hell is Kodak? <laughs> um, I also have a digital camera, I don't hand that to a kid either because they don't know what to do with it. Or they give me a thousand pictures to go through the next day, which is never fun. But anyway, so Kodak can't debunk the picture either. So it's been a, a local legend for a long time. It's very solid evidence. However, the picture's cursed. Females that hold it get the same symptoms like I talked about back at Big John's. Females that are pregnant that hold it, you're not going to have a good pregnancy. I'm not going to show it to you on my tour because you're not going to call me nine months from now because you guys had a great vacation and I'm to blame because the baby came out whatever. Like, I'm not going to be that guy. So I don't show it. If we get anything related to that, I always put the heated warning in your notes. Before you click this link, please understand this is the cursed picture I was talking about. So that's the story she's telling right now that she's going to continue telling for the next 10 to 15 minutes. Let's get your mind on pirates because that's what we're going to investigate next. But I do want to kind of show you a little bit up here. So there's two sides of the cemetery. So east and west, the side we're standing on, native Charlestonians only. That side is for everybody else. John Calhoun, 17th vice president, obviously from here. Well, not from here. He's over there because they had to figure out where he was supposed to go. They picked up his carsophagus three different times across the street with him trying to figure out where the hell he was supposed to go. But you can visit his carsophagus during the daytime because that side of the cemetery is open during the day. This side is being renovated and, and being cared for. 
so it's it's very limited space over here on this side. Um, they're taking pictures trying to capture orbs, by the way, because they all do that. So do you guys see the burning gas lamp off in the distance? Yes. Mm -hmm. That's the pirate house. It is literally on just on the outside of the wall from that cemetery. You can't miss it. So if you guys are walking, how long are you guys going to be in town? We leave Tuesday morning. Oh, so you got a few days. So if you're down here walking around and you see the house with a big anchor on the front, you can't miss it. Somebody lives there. Don't go in his backyard and he gets pissed. Don't ask me how I know. So, <laughs> <laughs> I like to poke around. Can you all tell? So, but the cool thing is, is that's where Blackbeard's men would come off the ships and they would meet with a few ladies, have a few drinks, have a bed to sleep in. Um, and then they actually dug a tunnel from the pirate house, one block over going that way, over to Dock Street Theater, which is in one of the top ten haunted locations of America. The reason why they go up there is because at the time it was called Planter's Hotel. It still gave plays, but it was also a whorehouse. It was a hotel. They would go back and forth. But they would also work. Let's face it, pirates tied really good knots. So they would even, in between their bartering and trading amongst the locals, they would still go in and work at the theaters. So that tunnel, we know is, is a real thing because they just filled it in in the 1990s. So the, the rumor was is that Blackbeard actually had his treasure in there. We all know that that damn treasure is in North Carolina. So <laughs> now that your mind is on pirates, we're going to go look at a pretty badass, kick-ass female pirate that's pretty famous. So hopefully she comes through for us tonight because I'm really not getting a whole lot of other like, oh, that's really cool, that's really cool. You know, I'll be honest, like when I see things that I'm like, I'm excited about this. I don't have anything I'm excited about yet. So until I really look at the data the next day, let's hopefully we capture something with this last part of the investigation. Let's cross the There's a light that comes through that's to mess with guys like me trying to capture the same type of picture. The church doesn't want anybody like me up there. So that's why that sign is there. Yet every ghost tour in town stops right in front of that sign and tells that story. So we're going to be looking at this building over here with the crosses on it. Okay. So that's the powder magazine. So couple things. First off, those aren't crosses. Those are earthquake bolts. Did they explain what earthquake bolts are to you guys on the carriage door? Like five years ago, yeah. I, I, I don't 100 remember them, but I remember what The they... gist of it is, because of our big earthquake in 1886, they started putting these earthquake bolts in, in certain specific buildings. Um, and you don't have to be literally on somebody at all times. Like I said, gotcha. you can try to. I know you've been trying to keep me in the shot, too. Um, but anyway, so the gist is, is if a building gets quaked again, those earthquake bolts are basically turnbuckles, so they can tighten them up, and it'll straighten the building back up. Oh my gosh. So, those are the very first set of earthquake bolts they put in, because this is our oldest government building standing on the East Coast. So, this is the powder magazine. It held gunpowder for seven different wars. Um, trying to make it, how do I, how do I explain this? I think I, I feel like I missed something. Look, I got chest, but I know the doctor was back there, but chest. Well, a chest could also relate to pirates. Pirates, yeah, we don't have pirates. And you got dime, which is also another symbolic thing. So I get a lot of guests that are looking for dimes on this tour from their loved ones, because instead of pennies from heaven, dimes from heaven are just as common. So dime is, is very common. Um, if olive comes up after that or somewhere nearby that, there's an olive branch on the back of the dime. So somebody came for you. Which would make sense of why you had a grandma. significant, you had grandma, you also had breathe. So it was almost like they're talking to you directly, which happens often. It's just stuff I can't prove, only you can. Right. That's, that's cool though. That it is, is cool. very cool. So, what's grandma's name? I just... Cosby. Cosby. Mm -hmm. I never got to meet her. She died when my mom was 18. Okay. Interesting. Just so I had a name in my head, so it's something to listen for. Um, so, I told you guys about the Charlestown Wall, right? Came mm -hmm. up Cumberland Street. That's Cumberland Street right there. Okay. So, the wall came up here and then went half a block past the powder magazine and started going down towards the battery. So, if you think about it, it is literally right in the corner of where the original Charlestown Walls were. So, it's there for a reason, obviously, to protect it. So, let's think about how far away from the water it is. It's about three blocks away from the water. So, if a ship comes up and attacks the powder magazine and that cannonball goes through the 35 inch thick walls. It gets clouded. 
<laughs> there's gunpowder inside that's going to make it explode. But right. the cool thing is, is there's sand in the roof of that building. The, the gist of it is, if it explodes, the sand goes up and then falls to put out the fire. Well, that's a great idea and all, it just doesn't work. We had gotcha. another powder magazine that burned to the ground because the sand couldn't put it, put the fires out. But the sand from 1712 is still in that roof because sand does not disintegrate. So that sand, it's still there. We know that. Repairs in the 1990s before they turned it into a museum. So during the time that this was being built is where a pirate story comes from because it's obviously a very familiar building. So 1703 to 1713 took about a decade to make this building. 1708, right in the middle of that, a young lady moves here from Ireland. Her name is Anne Cormack. She moves here from with her dad and his mistress, which happened to be her mother. So kind of stay with me. There's a lot of twists on this one. <laughs> so they came here from Ireland to get away from his scorned wife. Halfway around the world, 1708, on a ship to get away from a pissed off wife. Yep. You guys got me? Okay. Yep. So who hasn't done that? Right? <laughs> I moved two hours away, but whatever. <laughs> So, obviously she sees this building being finished, 1713 rolls around, she becomes a teenager. We have pirates coming through town at this point. It's the golden age of piracy. So about 1715, she falls in love with one of those pirates. His name is James Bonney. Dad doesn't approve. He's a filthy pirate. Obviously he doesn't approve. So what do they do? They run away to Jamaica. They get married. Anne Cormac becomes Anne Bonney. So Anne Bonney, when you Google her name, is the most famous female pirate ever. So, cool thing is, well, not really a cool thing. James Bonney did not turn out to be the pirate she wanted. He was a privateer, which basically made him a, a spy for the British. He was a coward. She wanted the Johnny Depp, Captain Jack Sparrow kind of guy. So what she do? She falls in love with another pirate. His name is John Rackham, a.k.a. Calico Jack. He dressed really well. He stole shit from very sophisticated people, and he wore it. Right. So that was his Calico part of his name. So Calico Jack is an up-and-coming Captain Jack Sparrow-type pirate, and he has his own ship, and she wants to be part of it. He says, okay, but females curse pirate ships. You're going to dress like a guy to be part of my crew. She's okay with that because her father used to hide her as a little boy apprentice in his attorney office when they lived in Ireland. She's used to dressing like a guy. She don't care. He's like, you can be a female on my quarters, but you're going to be a guy on my crew. Mm-hmm. Not exactly. I would say no. <laughs> so, with her being a female in his quarters, she eventually gets pregnant. So what's he do? He drops her off in Cuba. Go have the baby. We'll Tell figure. Us, what do you want? That's just my booking of when somebody books another tour. <laughs> <laughs> so I know what it is. Um, so <laughs> it always gets people a good chuckle. Um, so she has the baby, but she comes back with no baby. There's a lot of holes in this story, which is why I say this is almost like your expert level. You guys can ask whatever you want to when we're done, um, as far as your spirit boxes, instead of me suggesting questions. But now she's dressed like a female. She don't care anymore about hiding her gender. So of course this pisses off Jack. And she goes down below deck to the crew that he just acquired and captured, and she starts flirting. She starts flirting with a young man. This is guy number three, by the way. I'm gonna keep tally. So we got a couple more. So <laughs> <I'm here. laughs> So she starts flirting with this guy, and this guy takes off his hat. It turns out it's a female pretending to be a guy to be part of the capture of the crew that he just got captured by Calico Jack. Sorry, that's a tongue twister. So obviously it's another female. So she becomes friends with this female. Her name was Mary Reed. She convinces Mary to, hey, come join the crew. Obviously, Jack doesn't care. I'm a girl, right? So they're becoming part of the crew. The British fleet rolls in one day, and all the other pirates are down below deck watching the new captives, and they're too drunk to come up to fight off the British fleet. We're talking multiple ships. It's literally Anne, Bonnie, and Mary Reed fighting off, you know, the British fleet coming on. Obviously, the ship gets captured. So all the pirates down below deck, including the captives, they all get tried and hung pretty quickly for piracy. So Anne Bonnie and Mary Reed hurry up and dress like a guy before the you know captive the capturing took place, and they go before the judge separately because he wants to know who is attacking them, who is the only two brave men to fight back. So they reveal their gender in front of Chief Justice Nicholas Law. So if my name shows up here, that's why. It happens all the time. He says, "I don't care if you're females. I'm going to try and hang you anyway." Then they pled their bellies, which both means that they said that they were pregnant. God knows by whom. They have no idea. But he said, okay, we'll delay your hanging. So they go back to jail. Dad here in Charleston, he still got his Irish money. So he's able to bail out Anne Bonnie and bring her back home. What we know from there is that she remarried again, got him a four, had four kids, so there's another four, and died at the age of 84. Desperately. <laughs> Came back here desperately, I'm sure. 
So what happened to Mary Reed? She died in a Jamaican jail from whatever pirates died from in a Jamaican jail. You can use your imagination on that one. So I'm only giving you the facts. I've read five different books about this story. I don't even like pirates. I'm not that pirate guy. I didn't even like this story until I wasn't allowed to go down Philadelphia Alley anymore. And then I started coming here and I started getting evidence. So it makes sense to me now. Now that I'm actually capturing stuff. So we're going to get closer to the building so you guys can check it out. We might get some film from the front based on if there's another tour hanging out up there because they all like to stop up there too. Again, it's the oldest government building on the East Coast. So we're going to ask some questions. We're going to see what comes out of it. And then we're going to wrap up this night. What do you think? Very cool. Okay. So I think everything has been more personal to you. I'm going to be honest. So we're going to keep going. Grandma was coming through to talk to me. I don't know. She's going to bring it. I've run to her before. So one of the first tours I did, I didn't have much equipment. And I had uh, somebody from um, uh, Desert Storm. One of my, it was just him and his girlfriend. Everything that came through was about his buddy that he lost overseas. Everything. It didn't matter what story I told. It didn't matter what questions I asked. Everything was related to him. His name, the guy didn't speak our language. So like a lot of Spanish terms came up. Um, he was his driver over there, so the word driver came through. He, you know, the guy must have, on my, you know, ghost hunt, must have been like the gunman. Injured. Interesting. Um, again, great picture spot. I was waiting, I was hoping we were going to be able to capture that. So, St. Philip's steeple, the moon in the background. Oh, if you guys need me to hold something, take a picture, I can. I can do that one probably. By the way, that steeple that you're looking at is a little off from the earth. Mm -hmm. Yep, just like that. Not enough for the naked eye to see, but the measurements are. Right. here. So, so from July, like the kind of days out here at nine o'clock at night. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Our aren't drenched. too horrible. I am usually drenched. Touched me. There's that glitch. We got the glitch. Now you got ticket. Um, so this thing will glitch here. I don't know why. I just got the glitch that came through. It was a lot different than the last one I saw. This picture is really, really light. It's normally pretty bright at like that. Tide. But that glitch was weird. And I've had other tours stop. There's that glitch again. Unless I'm catching something. Like light reflecting off of it. I'm gonna have to work through the back end of this. My, sure. my ghost is hungry. He's hungry. So we'll see what else comes up out of that because there is a restaurant nearby this haunted. Oh. There's actually two of them. So first one is over there on that corner. We passed it. It's on it's called used to be called Bocce's. So when I open up my shop that has equipment and books, and then upstairs is a haunted hotel, that's a place I'm looking at. Um, that's actually the end game. And we'll have multiple locations. But there's another one nearby over on uh, Queen Street called Puget's Porch. I'm sure you guys have heard of that being through the city. Um, it's a pretty famous restaurant, but it is haunted by a lady named Zoe, who used to be a school teacher. So I get the words teacher, I get all kinds of things around that. Sometimes she just kind of pokes up wherever she wants to. I'd like a menu. What's your name? We have a what? Zoe, how old are you? Zoe died in an old age. Curious because it says menu. Incredible. That's also weird because this is normally a dead zone for EMF, and I'm at 0.5.
Mary Reed? What do you want to tell us? It's kind of strange. No, it says feet. It says what? Feet. My feet are really swollen from traveling because okay. I have diabetes and yes, back seriously, That's why I always mention when she's been stepping. struggling really bad and putting my feet up and now it says feet. So maybe or, somebody is like... I'm telling you, a lot of it's, or a lot of it's at you. Yeah. I'll, I'll completely agree with that. What would I even, like, what, what could I even ask her? I don't what know What your shirt? Something simple. Okay. Mm. Grandma, if you're here, what color is my shirt? Turn this one up a little bit. Or who, I mean, it could be, it, it could be your grandma, or it could be calling you grandma. It could be anyone but I mean there's a lot of it goes right in line with you though hmm. deities are involved so is this grandma on your mom's side or dad's side my mom's mom okay so ask what mom's name is to prove that she's actually here what's my mom's name What was your dad's name? Static. How, how old was Stacy's mama when you passed away? the pirates. Let's ask something about okay. these big bag pirates. I, I'm going to say something kind of stupid right now, but I actually have like a really bad headache and I don't get headaches at all. And, and with, again, I don't I mean, see any EMS here on a nightly basis. The fact that this thing is, look at, I'm at 0.3 right now. It's been jumping up between 0.5 and 0.6, which is about the mid mark on this guy. So, and it's going down and then coming right back up again and then going down. No rhythm whatsoever. So I'm not entirely surprised. Yeah, I'm like, I'm seriously like, I don't get headaches, but my head hurts bad. Well, I talk a lot too. No, no, I talk, <laughs> I talk more than you do, so we're good. I talk for a living. You, you really want to go this route? <laughs> I, get up, I get up on stage and I talk more than I sing. That's Is that what you, you are on the, in the band? Yeah, 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 from the band. So. Well, you, you mentioned that earlier. I just didn't know what instrument you played. Yeah, I have a little guitar, but mostly sing. I was a music teacher many, many moons ago. That's what caught my ear about it. I know just enough guitar to write songs. Sorry. Let's put it that, you know, then I make everyone in my band better than me, and that, that's, how, that's how I set my band up. If I'm the worst musician in my band, then I'm doing well. Yeah. I couldn't deal with the drama. I was a drummer. And I taught percussion. I, I just I got out of the band life. There is a lot of it. Unfortunately, even in, in people in their 40s and 50s are still drama. I got out and started writing books. I've been doing it ever since. That was 22 years ago. I'm hearing a lot of Bible stuff. Church channels. Well, it did say reap. Well, and, and your grandma was, was very strong Christian. Right? Mom was mom. Yeah, no. No, I thought she no, was. Really. Towards the end, maybe. 2.70. Strength. That's the highest it's been since we got here. 2.7. Okay, what was what was grandpa's name? Would she know the nickname that was she know what you guys called him? What was grandpa's nickname? Builder. 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 
What was the nickname? We call him Tata. That would have been a weird one to come up with, but okay. What was the only person we buried ashes was um, Uncle Larry. Uncle Larry, we did that at the cemetery ourselves. Blue. Blue? Well, that usually shows up back at the Pinkney site for the indigo. That comes up there all the time. That would have been, that would have kind of creeped me out a little bit. <laughs> no, we had, yeah, we her one, her uncle had passed and they, they were going to, who were they burying him with? His dad? With grandpa? With grandpa. And then the cemetery people didn't show up. They were late. So we, did, you know, they were just putting it, you know, just putting it in the ground by. They got permission. And they showed up after it was, we were like, we already did it. Like, we did it. We were out in the cemetery with a shovel. It was weird, but kind of had our own little ceremony. Yeah, I heard that. Heard 9-7. I want to say 9-7 was when Anne Bonnie was born, 1697. Don't quote me on that one until I research it again tomorrow. So if we can ask her, let's ask her something. The, the pirate the pirates you ask her what what was the name of your husband's ship you know it's funny as most people don't think of that and no. that's a great question that's something i can prove right so you can it's it's a little out there but only certain we're gonna know it there's never remember it i don't remember what it is because I've never had it come up before, but right. I have looked into it. Next. Next, Next question. <laughs> and I just, this went up to 2.0. Oh, Alicia. Oh, and Bonnie, tell us your mother's name. take that let's go ahead and start wrapping this up I'm gonna let that keep going for just a minute because that's like been giving us the most activity I feel like and again that's why I give you guys the whole list so that you because there might be something on there you missed 